It wasn't too long ago that my subwoofer amp died on me and I had $300 to either fix the subwoofer amp or buy a new subwoofer. And it was about that time where I really started looking for subs under the $300 range and it was impossible to find a good one. And today I want to teach you how to actually build one that will cost you actually less than $200 and will sound better than any of the subwoofers in the $300 range. Stay tuned. We're going to get started. It's a dual passive radiator, 8-inch subwoofer. And the build starts now. Alright guys, all the parts that we used were actually purchased from Parts Express. Now I put links down in the description to all the parts, so that way you can make your own. This subwoofer, when completed, will only be a 14 by 14 by 14 inch cube. So, and that's assuming you're using 3 quarter inch MDF. Now we did use one Dayton 8 inch classic subwoofer, two Dayton passive radiators, and a Dayton SA100 plate amplifier. And I must say, this thing when finished looks awesome. The NDF was purchased from a local hardware store. You can get it from your own local hardware store. And I'll tell you, if you don't have the tools to cut it out, most hardware stores will cut it down to size for you. Just use the cut list provided below in the description and uh, send that, bring that with you when you go get your MDF. And the first thing you want to do is measure the speakers and the amplifier cutouts. Now I measured seven and a quarter inch for the Dayton Classic subwoofer and seven inches for both the passive radiators. And I also need a cutout for the for the amplifier and that was six and a half by seven and a half. Now. Let's get them into the shop and do some cutting. Now that we have our wood in the shop, we will want to find the center of the pieces we are cutting the woofers out of. To do this, we just find a straight edge. In my case, I found a leftover piece of MDF, and I lined it up to each of the corners to draw a straight line. Now where they intersect is the center. Now we need to find the center on the three pieces that we plan to put the subwoofer and the two passive radiators, and this is to make sure that our circle when we cut out is directly in the center. So I put mine on my subwoofer and the passive radiators on all the three sides. And I put the plate amp on the other four sides. This way the air gets excited all around the subwoofer in every direction. Plus, it looks really awesome. Now, it's time to set up our circle jig. Now I'm using the Jasper 200 to make perfect circles for the woofer and the two passive radiators. Once I finish with these, it's time to move on to the back plate. For this, I used a square so that I could make sure it had sit straight, and then I cut the shape out with my jigsaw. Now, before you go any further, make sure to test fit it. And look at that. It fits. Now let's assemble a cabinet. Glue lots of it. Don't be afraid to get glue on the outside. That can be sanded off. I use my brad nailer, and that's just to make sure it holds straight during the drying process. It's not anything for rigidity, so if you don't have a brad nailer, that's fine. This is also the time that you will want to brace your enclosure. Now, to do this, I just take some scrap pieces of MDF and I brace the inside. Now, I don't have any video of this, but if you want to see what it, that looks like, take a look at the technical drawings. They're in the description down below. Once the glue dries, we will need to seal the MDF. In this video, I'm using a combination of wood glue and water. It's about a 50-50 mix and some Bondo. Just put as many layers on it that you think you need to sand between the layers so you have a nice flat surface to paint on. Now that the painting is finished, let's install the amp and drivers. The best thing to do is to install the plate amp first, and then we'll follow that by the subwoofer. This gives us plenty of room to make sure that we can plug up the subwoofer and everything fits nicely inside. Next, we need to put the passive radiators in. Now it's starting to look really nice, but we're not quite finished. I didn't want the subwoofer moving on me, so I installed a few rubber feet. Now that looks about right. And let's go test it out. Boy, this thing is loud and tight, exactly the way I like my bass to be. It was, I was actually able to squeeze 106 decibels out of this thing. 
That's crazy to get from an 8-inch subwoofer, especially in a room. And that was testing it inside my theater room, which is 25 feet long by about 12 feet wide. It's a huge space to get 106 decibels from. The best part is it's ultra clean sounding. Now, I would encourage anyone on a budget to build this subwoofer. Can you get better and bigger? Sure. Can you get better and bigger for about $200? I don't think so. This is an absolutely amazing subwoofer for the price. So please, go ahead and build the subwoofer. Description down below is all the parts that you guys need. Thanks for watching. As always, please, if you like this, give it a thumbs up. And as always, subscribe and share it with your friends. Double digit thousand.